Photoshop's June 2025 update is here and with it comes a huge new change that is tucked away in the settings. It's a setting that you need to change because it's gonna help you to make better selections. Now this update reads that it improves select subject and background removal results with cloud processing. For more precise subject detection and selection, especially around complex edges and fine details, enable cloud processing. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that and exactly what difference that makes and how you can use this to create better selections, which ultimately is gonna help you to edit better photos. So before we jump into today's video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. As a creator, I'm always hungry to continue learning and improving my skills. So I've been watching a course on Skillshare that covers color correcting raw footage. Now the classes on Skillshare are taught by world-class creatives and professionals and span everything from art and illustration to design and photography. While I've really enjoyed using the platform to improve my video editing, I've also spent some time and checked out the photography courses for you guys, and there are a bunch of amazing courses that cover both Lightroom and Photoshop for those of you looking to improve your photography. Now there's no risk as Skillshare is including a seven day free trial and a 30 day money back guarantee and the first 500 people to use the link down below in the description or scan the QR code are going to receive 20% off their first year of Skillshare. I really enjoy checking Skillshare out, so I think you should not wait. Go ahead and get started today on Skillshare at the link down below in the bio. Let's first jump right on in there into Photoshop. Make sure your Photoshop is updated so you have this feature. Now, I first wanna show you kinda the old way without this, and then I can show you the new way and show you how much better it is. Here's a photo I have of a couple bears. The subject should be easy for the program to detect. Let's see how it works. This is before I've changed any settings. So I'm gonna go to select and subject. You could also go down here in the, uh, I think this is like the contextual taskbar or something like that. Uh, and then I'm just going to create, so let's just say like a curves. Uh, I'm gonna hold Alt Option button. That's one button, the Option button on Mac, Alt Option on PC, and look at my mask. Now you can see it's selected these subjects. Now if you look around the hairs, it's done a decent job, but when you look at the photo, it hasn't done great. We'll press the forward slash button, and now you can see uh, red is what's not selected, and then you can see what is selected by seeing this bear. You can see it's done a pretty marginal job there. So you can certainly use this mask. It's definitely usable in the old way and you can make some adjustments like this. But if you do too much pushing or pulling, you start to get this kind of weird little halo artifacting that just doesn't look good because of the poor selection that's been made. So let's go ahead and look at how we change this one setting and how this is gonna make this a lot easier to make an adjustment like this. So we're gonna go up to Photoshop and we're gonna go down to settings, then we'll go to image processing. You can come in here. Now the setting that you wanna change is select subject and remove background. Again, your Photoshop needs to be updated to do this uh, on the most recent update if you're watching this video as it's relatively new. Uh, so you're gonna to go to this option here and change it off of device and change it to cloud. Now you're gonna hit okay. So let's make another subject selection here. Select subject. And the one thing is you're gonna see it's a little bit slower, but that still wasn't that much slower. I didn't speed it up at all. Now let's create that same curves adjustment and let's zoom in and look at the mask. So again, we'll hit that forward slash button and look at that mask. This is the new mask compared to the old mask. New mask, old mask. Now look in some of the highly detailed areas like right around here. So it's using a bit of feather to make that look a little bit more realistic. We'll hold the Alt Option button so we can look at the mask. This is the fur of the bear on the new mask, and this is the old one. You can see it is just so much better. Now, when I make any adjustment here, it is going to look a lot better. Even if I really pull on this slider, you can see that it still looks really good over here. It doesn't look all weird and halo-y like it did before. So this even works on landscapes as well where there's not necessarily a super strong subject, even though I guess there really is here. So you could go back up and do select sky. This is the old way that you would do it, and there has not been an update to that yet, unfortunately. But in a lot of landscapes, you can do remove background, and the background is going to select the sky. You can see I selected it there. It's gonna take just a second, and it does a perfect job clipping out the background. Now, if you're saying, I don't wanna remove the background, that's not a problem. All you need to do, let's say I wanted to do a curves layer again, create my curves 
and just click and drag this layer mask right on up there, replace the layer mask. Now it's selected on the curves. Uh, you can adjust this and you can really reef on these sliders without having that nasty haloing. You could invert it and uh, using command I to invert or control I on PC, make adjustments to the sky. And like I said, you will notice as I do this, it doesn't create really bad halos because the selection is really, really good. Now this works for other things like portraits as well. I'll go in here we'll do select subject. This time we'll select it out of the uh, task bar down here just to mix it up. Now, I didn't take this portrait. This is just a stock image. I don't have a lot of great portraits, so this was a good one to use an example on. We'll go in with the curves, and then you will see as I adjust this curve, there is, once again, no weird ghosting going on because it's made a relatively good selection. We'll hit that back button there. You can see it's done a really good job of selecting the model here. Now, this is gonna work with any, literally any kind of layer. I'm just showing you on a curve because it's easy to show you. But if you wanted to do something like adjust the hue saturation, you could drag that mask right onto there. You know, you could increase it or decrease the saturation. You could, you know, duo tone the image kind of like that. You can really do whatever you want. And it has done such a nice job of making that selection that it looks really, really realistic here. Lastly, I'll just show you kind of one more use, especially for those of you either portrait or for potentially um, wildlife photographers like this. Now, originally I made edits to this photo before this setting was a thing. And what I really wanted to do is make the image blurrier in the background behind the bear. I wanted to add a little bit of background bouquet, if you could, so to speak, I guess. Uh, but you will see this layer mask that was made uh, looks like this. Now it's not great, especially when I do this and I do the, where you can get the red overlay. It's done a horrible job down here. Horrible job over here as well. Horrible job on the claws. Just the whole thing is pretty not great. Pretty average or less than average at best. Now, instead of using that mask there, I was able to create a different mask using our subject selection, just like how we did. And you can see, look how much better of a job that has done on the image. Let's toggle that. Look at how much better, so easy to do. And due to that, I was able to make this adjustment to the image where you can see I have the background blurred out a little bit. So the possibilities with selections are truly endless. I could use this to do something like create um, color balance on the bear. If I wanted to make my bear a different color, we would invert this mask, command I and we could adjust the color of the bear. Now again, the importance of this is that it makes it so that your edits appear seamless. You literally cannot tell that I've made this red adjustment around the bear. There's no ghosting, nothing like that. So that is really where this comes into play. This is a setting you absolutely must change in the brand new Photoshop. All right, guys, hopefully that helps change the setting immediately, no matter what kind of photographer you are. I think you always want to be using that cloud processing because it is going to allow you to get so much better selections. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that about this video, please let me know down below in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe to help me to continue to grow my channel. I will help you to become a better photographer. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.